to restore some sort of calm in Paris. Thousands of supporters of the Yellow Vest movement, which is a political movement for economic justice, stormed the streets to keep up pressure on President Emmanuel Macron. French security forces fired tear gas after a march through central Paris went from peaceful to provocative. Thankfully, there have been no reports of injuries tonight. Well, in Houston today, hundreds of people gathered to honor the seven year old victim of a drive by shooting. Her killer still on the run tonight. Jasmine Barnes, she was riding in her mom's car last Sunday with her two sisters. That's when the gunman opened fire in what appears to be an unprovoked attack. An entire country has now galvanized to find justice for Jasmine. Jasmine is everyone's child. We gonna find no matter what corner we have to turn, no matter what rock we gotta go under, we gonna find you, man. Now, Jasmine's mother was wounded in the attack. Police are searching for this man. They just say a white man in his 30s or 40s, vague description, but you see they have the sketch. He was driving that red pickup truck. Tonight, Jasmine's family is hoping her killer is caught before the seven-year-old is laid to rest this coming Tuesday. Well, it was supposed to be a night of fun. Instead, five teenage girls celebrating their friend's birthday at an escape room died in a fire. Police in Poland are still not sure exactly how that fire even started. Now, as you may know, an escape room is where a group of people are locked inside and try to find a way out by searching for clues as part of a game. Well, two Baltimore police officers are recovering tonight after their police cruiser crashed over a median. This happened along Highway 83 between Belfast and Sheewan Roads. Now, the car rolled onto its side and stopped on the right shoulder of that highway. The two officers were taken to the hospital and they're expected to be okay. It's one of the biggest recent drug busts in our area. Check this out tonight. D.C. Mayor Mariel Bowser says as a result, lives have been saved. Police and federal authorities seized more than 88 pounds of heroin valued at two and a half million dollars. The big drug bust inside of a northeast Washington home also netted six handguns and a Maserati. Investigators say the drugs were sold in communities along Alabama and Minnesota avenues, as well as Naylor and Good Hope Roads, just ruining so many lives. So far, three people have been arrested in connection with this case. OK, talk about a real Scrooge here. Someone stole a little dog on Christmas morning. The owners of Bella, that little chihuahua, ran into Walgreens in Milwaukee just for a few minutes and left Bella inside of the car. Well, when she got back, Bella was gone. So for nearly two weeks now, Blanca Lawrence has been doing everything she can to find her aunt's chihuahua. She means the world to her. She. Um is at a loss right now. Um, she takes her everywhere with her. It's like her little baby. Well, the family believes someone has Bella or she was given as a Christmas gift. My goodness. She's also microchipped with updated information. The family says they just want her back safe and sound and will not press any charges. Hard to think about someone just opening the car door, stealing the dog and then perhaps giving it away as a Christmas gift. Couldn't imagine my two dollars being stolen. Yeah, that's not right. You that's know? not right. All right, last time we saw you, you, you left us hanging there a little bit. Well, I'm hanging right now. My you weather know? computer is uh, uh -oh. giving me fits and spurts. I may stand here for two or three minutes and talk to you, depending on what happens It's live there. TV, you It know? is live you, you TV. You need to go and fix that? Are you, you okay? Uh, I don't know, to be honest with you. Okay, let's find I out. I may not have a weather computer right now. So <laughs> but you can we'll, still do we'll this. Just, I can do this without the computer. I'm going to step out. I'm going to tell you what's going on, because we ended up with a really nice night. And uh, yeah, things are taking their sweet time to load. So you might as well come back to me on the desk and I'll talk to Lorenzo for a few minutes about what's going on here. So what happened today, we have this storm system that pulled away. Mm -hmm. Get low pressure, yeah. had the upper low, gave us the showers this morning, ended up only with about anywhere from 400s to 1200s. Not a lot of rain, we've had enough rain. Yeah, yeah, but plenty. some of the first rain we've had all month was last night and this morning. So we got to about 54. That storm was pulled out tonight. Temperatures range from anywhere like 51, 52 in town with the breeze is still up to some spots with light winds in the 30s. They were in Whoa, the 30s really? already. So that's one of the things that we're dealing with. Big range of temperatures and overnight clear to partly cloudy. We'll have temps from the 30s to perhaps the low 40s in town. Now tomorrow going to be a good day. So you want to get outside, maybe you got to take care of the Christmas tree or, or de-Christmas eyes or however, de whatever you call <laughs> when you take down your lights. Is there Still haven't taken those lights and trees down yet? Some people have not, Ooh. you know. They, they you know, waste no time. Some people do it. I know the 26, <laughs> you see the tree out there, boom, some people don't. But it'd be a good day tomorrow, except a little breeze. We're going to have some gusts 15, 20 miles an hour, but temps in the mid 50s. After that, things go things go nuts this week. Hmm. So Monday's going to be cold. We got a cold Monday shot cold. coming down, right? Yeah. So we've got a, a 
Cloudy skies, 30s to low 40s on Monday after being in the mid 50s tomorrow. So I see Monday's some movement, cold. By the way, does this mean your computers yeah. are fixed? Uh, yeah, I think it is actually. Okay. Let's, let's give it a shot. Something loaded. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'll show you what I can <laughs> over here. Thanks, Lorenzo. <laughs> so that's the storm I was talking about quickly exiting to the east, leaving some clear skies behind it. And those temperatures I was talking about, ah, better late than never, right? We've got temperatures which are down. Look at this, 36 in Culpeper, Manassas, to 52 in town. Pax River, please. Hey, somebody down at the Naval Air Station, fix your thermometer. This has been going on a good week or two, and I'm going to keep talking about it. I'm going to shame them into fixing their thermometer down there. Great folks down there at Pax River, but we got to get that thing fixed. 54 tomorrow, 55 or so for the high. Sunshine, breezy conditions, sustained winds 14. They'll be gusting 20, 25. Nationally, storms out west, they got flood warnings. It was part of the, I think it was the I-5 or PCH that had a flood, uh, mud flowing over it not far from Los Angeles. Meanwhile, the Pacific jet is active. We got the rain and snow on the West Coast. There's a storm on the East Coast and we sit in between high and dry and the future cast is pretty quiet here. Mild weather for tomorrow. As we said, we'll be in the 50s. That mild weather is going to disappear quickly as the chilly air returns as we head in toward Monday morning. So Monday, 30s and low 40s for highs. We'll need the heavier coats Monday. And then Monday night, Tuesday, a little feature may touch off with a few rain or snow showers coming through. No big deal, but by Monday morning, notice it's way down south and east of us and pulling away. And then Monday, yeah, we're going to shoot back up well into the 50s ahead of the next front, which might bring a late shower Tuesday, Tuesday night, but for the most part, quiet. All right, let me show you the forecast. Weather computer, right? Better late than never. Clear to partly cloudy. 36 to 44, though one or two spots might even be a little bit colder than this. Just cold and dry tonight. Tomorrow morning, we'll be in the 30s and 40s and 50 by lunchtime. Mostly sunny, blustery, a chilly start, but a mild afternoon, 48 to 56, breezy and brisk. Monday, it's going to be a chilly, 42. Tuesday, though, look at this. That isolated early shower, 59 by Wednesday. Wouldn't be surprised if we had a flurry in 45. Much colder Thursday and Friday in the 30s and then back in the 40s on Saturday. Frank, I hope things are working for you. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Don't say that. Everything okay on I your end? So. I, I cross my fingers because <laughs> if we don't have anything to show you, then I don't know what to do. Uh, but we can talk NFL playoffs. Hey, yeah, there it is. Colts are red hot. And you don't want to miss the owner's pep talk. He'll get you fired up next in sports. <laughs>
And now, WUSA 9 Sports with Frank Hanrahan, brought to you by Xfinity. All right, you want to see the exact opposite of what happens at FedEx Field when they open the gates? <laughs> this is what happens in Dallas before the Cowboys Seahawks playoff game. What are they giving away? Free beer? It's not general admission. They're storming the stadium. That's amazing. As for the game, we got a tight one in Big D NFC wildcard game. This was the best play of the game uh, so far. Russell Wilson hooking up with Doug Baldwin, who somehow ballets his feet, keeps those two feet down to keep a drive alive. Seahawks would score in that possession. But right now late, uh, it's Dallas with a 24-14 lead over the Seahawks. About two minutes left there. As luck would have it, the Colts go on the road and beat the Texans 21-7. So even after a 1-5 start, Indy moves on in the playoffs. We'll visit top seed Kansas City next week. Now, the post-game speech, that was interesting from owner Jim Ursay, who may put a ban on all post-game speeches moving forward. We win as a team, we lose as a team. Always win three phases of the game. We're team, team, team. No one gets singled out for good, bad, or indifferent, as Coach said. But... You know me, I'm a perfectionist. Guys, <laughs> I know you guys and you got more in the tank, okay? There we do. Like 31 points maybe, maybe, you know? <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that. I'm sorry, I don't want to be a Scrooge. I'm not Scrooge. I love you guys. Love it. I love it. Hey. Congratulations. Uh, I love how they give him the polite laugh, like, hey. Uh, there are several good storylines in the playoffs, including right up the road in Baltimore. Rookie quarterback Lamar Jackson trying to lead the Ravens far in the postseason. Says he can do it. Starts with the L.A. Chargers at 1 p.m. right here on WSA 9 tomorrow. Now, Jackson was asked this week if his lack of experience in the playoffs mattered. Yeah, you know, footballers, you got to love the sport, you know, to be able to compete in it. You know, I love the sport with all my heart, so I don't really look at it like, oh, you know, you've been a rookie, you know, you, you have to perform at this level. You, know, you got to perform at your level, too. You know, you out there on the field just like anyone else. Should be a lot of fun. Hey, it was sort of like, speaking of fun, the good old days of the Big East. Chris Mullen, St. John's in town versus Patrick Ewing and Georgetown. Both programs on the upswing with good records. But for the Hoyas, this was a woulda, coulda, shoulda won. They should have won the game, but they did not. Doesn't matter if you don't win. Ewing saying afterwards they got to figure out a way to close out games. Yeah, it's the little things that doomed Georgetown in the end. Got to take care of the ball when you're ahead as St. John's wins in D.C. Get this for the first time in 16 years. One of those losses that will sting Georgetown for a while. Hey, somebody we know is closing in on a big coaching milestone. Maryland's Brenda Freeze picked up career win 499 today against Ohio State. 75-69. Coach Freeze and her fourth-ranked Terps go for the big 500 on Tuesday at Nebraska. But Freeze knows it's not going to be easy. Well, we know how competitive the Big Ten is, uh, you know, this year. Any, we've said this, any team uh, from top to bottom can beat anyone in any given night. Everybody's hungry, everybody's improved, and um, I love it. it. It's great competition. It makes everybody better. And Northeast D.C. Catholic University taking care of Moravian in a shootout, 90-85. Great find from Andre Mitchell to Will Mulpin for two as the cards improved to one and one in conference play. We'll visit Juliana Wednesday night. Our good friend Steve Howe starting to get things going with the Cardinals. Good basketball there. Yeah, All mm -hmm. right. Thank you, Frank. You're welcome. All right. Apparently a nice Sunday ahead, but we'll get another check on your work week forecast when we come back. Stay right here.